This is my 14th video in my AP Biology Review Series, and it is about the genetics of bacteria and viruses. Viruses can only multiply within the host it infected. They're actually not made of cells. They're made of RNA or DNA, so that's the genetic material, enclosed in a capsid. And a capsid is a protein shell. Bacteriophages are viruses that infect bacteria. They replicate through the lytic or lysogenic cycles, and we'll be talking about both of them in the video. Adenoviruses are viruses that infect respiratory tracts of animals. Bacteriophages, adenoviruses are just examples of viruses. Host range is a group of host cells the virus can infect. Keep in mind that the viruses have to be able to bind to the receptors of the host cell. So a virus can't just infect any cell it comes into contact with. It has to have um, the proper receptor to bind to. This picture shows um, a few examples of viruses. Again, we have bacteriophages, adenoviruses, and I'm sure you're familiar with and have heard of influenza viruses. Um, in this example, all three of them have uh, a capsid, and the genetic material is DNA in this case. But again, RNA can also be the genetic material. So the lytic cycle has five main stages. Attachment, where the virus binds to the receptors on the cell. Entry, DNA is injected into the cell and the host's DNA is hydrolyzed. Then there's synthesis, where the host cell's enzymes and resources are used to create more virus parts. Assembly, where the parts self-assemble into viruses. And then release, the cell swells and bursts. And that's a lot of times it's called lysis, the um, bursting of the cell. And the viruses are released and will probably end up infecting another cell and the cycle will continue. This picture shows um, each step of the cycle. Again, we have attachment, entry, synthesis, assembly, and release. There's also the lysogenic cycle and certain factors will determine which cycle the phage enters, whether it's the lytic or lysogenic. Viruses replicate without destroying the host cell in the lysogenic cycle. Again, the virus will attach, inject DNA. The phage DNA is integrated into the host's DNA, and the combination of the both is called a prophage. The host cell will reproduce with the phage DNA in it, and there will be an environmental trigger that will cause the virus to return to the lytic cycle. So it's kind of scary because the virus has already replicated so much, and then all of a sudden something will trigger it and all these cells will burst. So this picture shows the lysogenic cycle. Again, we have the injection of the DNA. However, in this case, it becomes part of the host um, cell's DNA. Again, then those cells will replicate um, with the virus DNA in it. And if something triggers it, we'll go back to the lytic cycle and the cells will burst. Reproduction of animal viruses. So the lytic and lysogenic cycles were for bacteriophages. Many have an outer membrane called the viral envelope. It has glycoproteins on it that will attach to receptors on the host cell. And parts of the viral envelope are actually made from the host membrane when the virus um, leaves the cell. Retroviruses are viruses that inject RNA into the host cell along with reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase is an enzyme that transcribes RNA into DNA. So again, that's the opposite of transcription. 
DNA will be integrated into the host DNA, and that creates what's called the provirus. So this picture um, shows HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, which is an example of a retrovirus. And as you can see, it'll bind to a specific receptor on the cell membrane. In this case, it's the CD4 receptor. And reverse transcriptase will synthesize RNA into DNA. Integrase will integrate the viral DNA into the cell genome. Uh, then transcription will occur, translation, uh, and the protein will, sorry, the proteins it needs will be um, created, and the new virus can leave the cell. And again, as you can see, it's taking some of the glycoproteins from the cell membrane with it. Bacteria. Bacteria undergo binary fission to reproduce. Most genes of a bacteria are on its single bacterial chromosome, which is made of circular DNA and proteins. However, um, bacteria also have plasmids sometimes, as you can see in the picture, and we'll also be talking about plasmids um, later in the video. It's a small circular piece of DNA with a few genes. It can replicate on its own if they have an origin of replication. In this picture, it does. If not, it will integrate into the cell's chromosome for replication. So again, um, copying DNA begins at the origin of replication. It's a specific place on the bacterial chromosome. Here are the steps. Replication begins at the origin of replication. The origin will move toward the other end of the cell. The plasma membrane will grow inward and the cell wall forms. And there are two daughter cells. So you might be wondering, um, because bacteria reproduce asexually, how would they have any genetic variation? Well, there are mutations. Each individual mutation is rare, but it can increase genetic variation if reproductive rates are high. Because keep in mind, bacteria reproduce at a very, very, very high rate. So mutations actually um, do contribute to genetic variation. There's also genetic recombination, which is the combining of DNA from two different places. For example, transformation, which is the uptake of foreign DNA, and that uptake causes a change in the bacteria's genotype and phenotype. So you might remember this from Griffith's experiment, and he found that if he mixed um, the rough strain, which was harmless, with a heat-killed smooth strain, and keep in mind the smooth strain is virulent, but it was heat-killed, the mouse would still die because um, transformation took place. The DNA from the heat-killed smooth strain was able to make the rough strain, which is supposed to be harmless, it was able to make it um, harmful. There's also transduction. We're going to talk about two types, generalized transduction, where phages carry bacterial genes from one host to another. And this is accidentally. Um, their goal is not to increase genetic variation in bacteria. However, sometimes they do end up taking um, some DNA with them. During the lytic cycle, the host DNA may not be degraded properly, and there might be some leftover that the virus will carry with it. Then there's specialized transduction. Phages that undergo the lysogenic cycle can pick up a few adjacent genes after it's been integrated into the host chromosome and transfer them to another bacteria cell. But in this form of transduction, only genes will be located close to the prophage site can be transferred this way. So this first picture shows generalized transduction. You have to kind of look at it um, in a strange order. It goes to the side and then down. Um, as you can see, the virus um, ends up taking some DNA with it and um, will be able to transfer DNA from one cell to another. This one shows um, 
specialized transduction, as you can see in this case, the genes um, that are located close to the prophage site um, will be transferred to the other bacterial cell. Conjugation is the direct transfer of genetic material between two bacterial cells. They are joined through an extending sex bilis from the donor. A piece of DNA called the F factor is needed in order to form six sex pili and exchange DNA during conjugation. It can exist as a segment of DNA within the bacterial chromosome, the F factor, or as a plasmid. A plasmid, again, is a small circular piece of DNA. Cells with the F plasmid are labeled as, as F plus. Those without are F minus. And the ones that are F plus will act as donors during conjugation. The cells with the F factor that is integrated in their chromosome are called HFR cells, and HFR stands for high frequency of recombination. And they will also be the donors. This um, picture shows how two cells, one with the F factor and one without will be joined through the sex pilus coming from the one with the F factor. And then that F factor is going to be tried to, um, is going to be tried to be transported to the other cell. However, many times it's not able to be transported completely because it's a pretty large piece of DNA. And that's what you see in six a, the F minus cell will remain F minus because the entire F factor sequence was not received. However, in uh, some cases, the F factor will be completely transferred and the F minus cell will become an HFR cell. And you can see that in 6B. Transposable elements, DNA of a single bacterial cell can also undergo recombination. Pieces of DNA move from one place of the cell's genome to another target site. Some are cut and paste, some are copy and paste, and I think those two titles kind of explain themselves. There are insertion sequences, which are the simplest transposable elements, and they only exist in bacteria. Keep in mind bacteria, prokaryotes, so a lot of things um, that occur in them are much more simple than the equivalent in eukaryotes. And they have two sets of inverted repletes and the transposase gene in between. And you can see that in this picture. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe if you would like to see more videos.